So these next couple of years are going to be absolutely insane. A lot of the largest AI companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Microsoft have recently had their CEOs come out and talk about the next generation of AI models. And some of the things they're saying are truly mind-blowing and super exciting, but also super scary. We also have Google releasing their new model, Gemma 2, a smaller and more efficient model with significant advancements in safety built in. Lastly, we have to take a look at this new AI chip called Sohu that claims to be both significantly faster and cheaper than NVIDIA's newest Blackwell GPUs. So to kick off this video, I wanted to show you guys a quick clip from a recent interview where Mark Zuckerberg talks about Meta's upcoming holographic AI glasses. There's no release date for these yet. In fact, we haven't even gotten a demo yet, but we do know they've been working on these for a while now. And I honestly can't wait to see a demo because these sound so cool. And I can see these becoming a huge thing if they can actually do what they're claiming. There are basically going to be three different products. There's going to be kind of the displayless glasses that just do AI and can capture content and you can you know listen to audiobooks and music and take phone calls and all that. Then I think that there's going to be another step up where it may not be, it's not going to be full holographic display in the sense that it's not going to be like your full field of view as a hologram. Um, but I think you'll get maybe like a little bit of a heads up display. And I think that that's going to create a bunch of interesting use cases too. You'll be able to get notifications. You'll be able to message with people. You'll be able to um, message with, with AI. Um, answer any questions and not just have it speak to you, but also be able to kind of see which is, is higher bandwidth. So that's going to be exciting. Um, a lot of uses for a small screen, even, even if it's just a kind of a small heads up display. And then I think there's going to be the most premium version, which is kind of the full field of view, which is, you know, we're having this conversation in the future and like I'm a hologram sitting on your, li on your living room couch or you're here with me. And, um, and it's not just a video call. It's not just like there's a screen and you're there as a hologram. I mean, we can, we'd be able to interact, right? So like you want to play cards. It's like, okay, here, we, we get a deck of cards. It's a hologram. We're interacting. Um, and we, we can, we can kind of mess around with the same thing. You know, you want to create art together, or create content together, or like you draw on a whiteboard, you can just do all that stuff. Um, I think that's going to be pretty wild. And that, that still is where I think it's all going, but I'm just more optimistic now that it's actually going to be a big thing even before we get there. In other news, Toys R Us showcases their new AI-generated ad, the first ever ad to be created using OpenAI's Sora. This is also the first ever commercial to be almost entirely AI-generated, and this is really important to take note of because it's a sign of something larger, which is AI disrupting the labor market. We already know Sam Altman has been trying to get Hollywood to use Sora in big movies and TV shows, and the reason we haven't seen any of that yet is because it's it's still so early. If you even know about Sora or text-to-video models and how capable these models are getting, you're one of the few because most people don't really pay attention to this stuff and it's important to remember that these models only a year ago were pretty bad and definitely not TV ready. But within such a short period of time, they were able to advance tremendously and imagine how much better they will be even just a year from now. So you'd think we're likely to see a lot more of these fully or partially AI-generated commercials and maybe even TV shows and movies relatively soon, but based on the reaction Toys R Us received from the public after showcasing their commercial, I'm not so sure anymore. As you can see, the majority of people weren't too happy about it, and to be fair, it doesn't look very well made, but the point is we're likely to see a lot more of this hatred towards AI as it continues to disrupt new industries. Speaking of AI disrupting industries, Synthesia releases Synthesia 2.0, the world's first AI video communications platform built for the future of work. So these are essentially expressive virtual human avatars that can say whatever you want them to. They can be used for customer service, sales, content creation, education, basically anything that involves a video of a human talking. Obviously, they're not at that point yet where they look indistinguishable from a real human, but again, when we're talking about AI, the speed at which these things advance is just insane. So don't be surprised when Synthesia 3.0 or 4.0 or whatever other company creates a model that can generate hyper-realistic lifelike virtual humans. Now, Synthesia is not the only company working on this. There's also some big name companies that you may have heard of working on this too, like NVIDIA, who is exploring the use of digital humans across various industries. They posted this about a month ago, and some of the industries they plan to use this for are healthcare, gaming, customer service, and as a lifelike chatbot. TikTok has also been working on this. They recently introduced their digital avatars for brands and creators, which I covered in a past video. So a lot 
lot of companies have been working on this for various different reasons and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on it to see what comes of it. So last thing I'll say about digital avatars is imagine pairing this with Meta's idea to let creators make AI chatbot versions of themselves to create a more connective experience. So imagine something like this. This is an example of Meta's AI chatbots for creators where people can essentially interact with some of their favorite creators or celebrities by interacting with an LLM trained on that person's data. Now create a digital avatar of that person that can respond in real time just like the LLM and then we're entering into some really weird territory. And if you want to go even further, imagine then using Mark Zuckerberg's holographic AI glasses to project a hologram of this digital avatar that's already integrated with the LLM that can respond in real time and well now we're just going too far. Let, let's save that for another time. In other news, Etched is making the biggest bet in AI. So this is a company that claims to have created the fastest and cheapest AI chips to date. With over 500,000 tokens per second in Llama's 70 billion parameter model for throughput, Sohu, which is the name of the chip, is an order of magnitude faster and cheaper than even Nvidia's next generation Blackwall B200 GPUs. For Transformers, Sohu is the fastest chip of all time and it's not even close. So some pretty insane statements right off the bat and as you go through their website, they make some interesting points, like the fact that GPUs are not necessarily becoming more efficient, but they're simply making larger ones to inflate the performance gains. They also touch on the fact that GPUs are not inherently made for transformers, which is the architecture upon which all LMs are created. And so by creating chips specialized for transformers, they seem to be much more efficient. This is what they've done with Sohu, and as you can see from this graph, they appear to be significantly faster and cheaper than current state-of-the-art chips. They've also recently secured over $120 million in funding from some pretty well-known venture capitalists, so this seems to be the real deal, and I guess we'll see for sure once they actually start getting these chips out. Switching gears, we have some news on some of the new models that have came out recently, like OpenAI's GPT-40, which we're still waiting on to get the new voice mode. As you can see from this tweet from OpenAI, it's still going to be a while until we get access to the new voice mode because of various safety reasons and to ensure their infrastructure can handle millions of people using it simultaneously. That's essentially the gist of the tweet, and you can pause it if you want to read the entire thing, but this honestly isn't very surprising because if you think about how powerful this technology is, it makes sense that they're being extremely cautious. Next, we have a report that reveals Amazon has been working on a new secret model planning to compete with ChatGPT. Now, we didn't really get much information about it. All we know is that internally they're calling it Metis and that it'll likely have some agentic capabilities. So I'm curious to see how well it performs compared to other state-of-the-art models, but there's really no timeline on this model, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Google also released a new model, Gemma 2, 9 billion parameter and 27 billion parameter. This model does really well for its size and even outperforms some of the way larger models on certain benchmarks. It's also extremely fast and cheap and compatible with most AI tools, which makes it perfect for developers and researchers. On top of that, Google is opening up access to the 2 million context window on Gemini 1.5 Pro for all developers. So they will likely be increasing the context window size on their other frontier models as well. More good news for developers and researchers. Now that we looked at some of the current AI models, let's talk about the future of AI models. So I've compiled a few clips that you're gonna wanna see. Here's the first one of Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, talking about the next generation of models, GPT-5. So we don't know yet. Uh, you know, we're, we're optimistic, but we still have a lot of work to do on it. Uh, but I expect it to be a significant leap forward. Um, a lot of the things that GPT-4 gets wrong, you know, can't do much in the way of reasoning, sometimes just sort of totally goes off the rails and like makes a dumb mistake, uh, like even like a six-year-old would never make. Um, I expect it to be much, much better in those ways and to be able to be used for a much wider variety of, of more helpful tasks. So we can expect the next generation of models like GPT-5 to be more generalized and applicable to a wider variety of tasks. But based on the two following clips I'm about to show you, it seems like the true significant leap forward is going to be GPT-6. It's still pretty hard to get these models to um, follow instructions with subtlety and nuance over extended periods of time. I think that they can do it you know, and there's a lot of cherry-picked examples that are impressive, you know, on, on Twitter and stuff like that. But yeah. 
to really get it to consistently do it in novel environments is is pretty hard. And I think that it's going to be not one, but two orders of magnitude more computation of training the models. Um, so not GBT-5, but more like GBT-6 scale models. So I think we're talking about two years before we have systems that can really take action. So that was Mustafa Suleiman, Microsoft's AI CEO, talking about how we're likely to only see agentic capabilities in future models like GPT-6, which are still two years away. This seems to line up more with what Dario Amode, CEO of Anthropic, has said recently in an interview when asked about AGI. I've said this a few times, but you know, back in 10 years ago when all of this was kind of science fiction, I used to talk about AGI a lot. I, I now have a different perspective where I don't think of it as one point in time. I just think we're on this smooth exponential. The models are getting better and better over time. Um, there's no one point where it's like, oh, the models weren't generally intelligent and now and now they are. I just think, you know, like like a human child learning and developing, they're getting better and better, smarter and smarter, more and more knowledgeable. And I don't think there'll be any single point of note. But I think there's a phenomenon happening where over time, these models are getting better, better and better than even the best humans. Um, I do think that if we continue to increase the scale, the amount of funding for the models, if it goes to, say, 10 billion. Uh, so now a model would cost, what, 100 million? Uh, right now, 100 million. There are models in training today that are more like a billion. Right. Um, I think if we go to 10 or 100 billion, and I think that will happen in 2025, 2026, maybe 2027, um, and the algorithmic improvements continue apace, and the chip improvements continue apace, then I think there there is, in my mind, a good chance that by that time we'll be able to get models that are better than most humans at most things. So that's an insane statement. This is the CEO of Anthropic telling us that by 2027, we're likely to see AI models that are better than most humans at most things. That's only three years away. And based on what other people in the space have been saying, and the fact that most experts time till AGI estimates are continually dropping, it's crazy to say this, but having AGI in 2027 seems like a reasonable timeline. Finally, to end off the video, I wanted to show you guys a recent breakthrough in biology. This is ESM3, the first generative model for biology that simultaneously reasons over the sequence, structure, and function of proteins. This model essentially makes biology programmable, allowing scientists to generate new proteins by simply prompting the model with extreme precision. The reason this is so important is because proteins are essential for life itself. Every living creature has proteins, but there are so many different unique proteins that we still don't know much about. This model will help us understand more about our own biology and move us closer to being able to engineer our own biology. One of the major breakthroughs they've already made was generating a unique fluorescent protein that is equivalent to simulating over 500 million years of evolution. Now, I'm not a biologist or anything, but that seems like an incredible feat. And I'm really excited to see what else AI can do in the field of biology in the future. Anyways, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. And if you want to stay up to date on future AI news, make sure to hit that subscribe button.